Hello and welcome back to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas and this is the second video of my two-part video tutorial on how to install an email server in a Linux environment. In the first video we did all the uh, I guess you call it the legwork ahead of time to get the server prepared for um, Zembra. We set up the DNS and we also prepared a few packages and a few configuration files. Now let's proceed with the installation. As you can see, I downloaded it here and I unpackaged it and I gave it a short name of Zimbra, making it easy to browse to. So, before we begin though, chkconfig, run the checkcig command on named on. Named or bind or DNS, it's called named in CentOS, needs to be on at all, you know, otherwise, um, Zimbra's not going to work. So, if you re reboot your server by default, name doesn't start up. By running this command, it'll run all the time when you reboot. Alright, so let's start the installation. Check change directory to desktop. It is case sensitive, so it has to be a capital D. Change directory to ZIMBRA7. Run an ls command to see exactly what's available. There's the install sh, so it's going to be period slash install.sh. And since this is sent OS and not Red Hat, we're going to have to do a command called platform override, dash dash, P-L-A-T-F-O-R-M, and it's going to be dash, O-V-E-R-R-I-D-E. -E. They don't have one for uh, sent OS on the website, they have one for Red Hat. And since sent OS is based on Red Hat, we can use that package. We just have to let it know by doing the platform override command that this is fine to install and press enter and uh, do you agree uh, with the terms of the software license and yes I do and it's looking to see what needs to be installed and on these I normally choose yes to the defaults and the last two will be no because this is a standalone installation is not required yes 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 no no and as you can see it says here it's sent OS this is Red Hat just letting you know that it was designed for Red Hat but I have no problem with installing this in sent OS so I'm gonna say yes on my server and it will be modified yes now this installation will take a few minutes and I'll pause the video and at certain points of the installation, it'll require a few prompts. That's when I'll start the video back up and walk you through that. Just little feedback here. Um, with mobile devices, such as like the Android devices or Apple devices, um, Zimbra works great with it. I mean, you can go to the app markets and download uh, like iCal or CalDev or CardDev applications that connect great to uh, Zimbra so you can get your shared calendars, your address books, your email, send email, receive email, all that good stuff on your mobile devices. And I, I've done it personally on both Apple devices and on the different Android devices. Just a little feedback on that. So um, you'll be able to get your email through your Thunderbird, through your mobile devices, and through your webmail. And it, and it all connects with, with one another. Actually, it all connects to the webmail. So I'm going to pause the video here, and I will be right back. Great. Now on the screen, it's gonna has a menu prompt. Uh, we're gonna type in three, and then four, and we're gonna set up an administrative password. And I'm just gonna make it simple: P A S S W O R D. In fact, I will make it password one two three. Password one two three. Excellent and hit R to go back to menu and A to apply this configuration yes to save this file that's the directory path that's going to be saved and yes we understand my system will be modified and it will continue on with the installation one more quick note when you uh, launch your web browser uh, example on your mobile device you launch your web browser and you go to your URL um, like this is going to be test uh, dot the Jonas dot net. You put a HTTPS in front of it. If you want to see a mobile version on your web on your mobile device, just type in uh, the word M after the end of your URL. This also installs a mobile version, which is beautiful. So if you're on your Android or Apple, 
and you don't want to download any third-party apps, just launch your web browser to HTTPS, your URL slash M, you'll get a mobile version of it, you can log in, and it looks great, your calendar, address book, email, and it installs by default through this installation. So I'm going to pause the video, and at the next prompt, I will start the video back up again. Okay, great. We're at the screen now where it asks you to notify Zimbra of this installation. Normally I would say yes, but in this case I'm going to say no because this is just a virtual installation. It's going to be deleted after this tutorial, but normally I would do this if this was going to be a production server. Um, just out of respect to the uh, software company to let them know that I have installed and using their free software. So, no. And I use the fully qualified domain name, name as my host name on my server. Some people don't like doing that, some people do. I've heard both sides of the story on that one. But by doing this, as you'll see later on in the tutorial, when you go to log into the webmail, all you have to do is put in the user's name and password. If you use, say, the host name as, say, server1.local. Well, the difference is when you go into the administrative console, you're gonna have to actually set up a domain which is fine, but when you go into the webmail, you're going to have to actually use the full name address because it's not going to match your URL. So um, your URL will probably be like, you know, server1.local, but you'll create a domain name called um, whatever, like thejonas.net, and I'll go to log in. I'll have to log in with the user at thejonas.net password, but in this case, I've used the fully qualified domain name as the host name, so I can circumnavigate that and just type in, like, say, my user's name is Donald, just a simple Donald, at thejoinus.net, and um, makes it more user-friendly for the users. And I'm going to pause the video and wait until the next prompt comes up, and then we'll continue on. Great, the installation is complete. Um, as you can see, this installs a lot of information, um, antivirus, clam, um, spam, uh, utilities. I may do a few videos in the future tutorials on how to configure the uh, CLAM version within Zimbra in order to utilize it in your mail environment. Um, next, I'm going to hit enter. There's a couple more commands I have to do real quick here. So I type in su space Zimbra and we're going to type in zmt ls ctl https oh i think i mistyped that sorry we got to go into the zimbra so uh su zimbra and then it moves into the zimbra user then we're going to type that in we're going to type in z m t l s c t l https and this is going to set up your self-signed certificate on your server. Pretty quick. Since we're in this uh, right here, a couple quick commands we have to run. The maximum uh, mail transfer size is ten or two megabytes. This, by setting this, is going to put it at ten megabytes. If you want it larger than that, you know, times that by two, that'll make it twenty megabytes times that by two, that'll make it 40 megabytes, so forth and so on. So let's set it to 10 megabytes. And there's a cool instant messaging uh, option in Zimbra. So if you can communicate with other users via instant message, I'm gonna turn that on. And you're like, boy, that's a lot of information he's copied and pasting. Remember, you can pause this at any time to get this info. If not, I put it up on, on my website over here at the Let me just bring that over here. Just type in Zimbra. And there's those commands. There's the HTTPS. So you're going to go in as SU Zimbra. And then once you go into Zimbra, you're going to type in this command to set the certificate. And then you're going to run this command for the size, and then this command for the, uh, you know, the instant messaging, both of them. Remember, at, you know, you want to be able to send an email bigger than 2 megabytes and receive bigger than 2 megabytes. So this puts it at 10, or you can set it to any size you want. And real quick here, on the Jonas.net, I actually put a forum up. If you want to participate in the forum, 
that'd be awesome. And we can bounce ideas back and forth. Okay, that's pretty much it. Close this out. I'm going to have to reboot the server. Let me exit out of this. And I'm going to pause the video right now. And when it comes back up, we'll give it a test. Welcome back to the Jonas.net. I've rebooted the server. And now let's go into the administrative console. Launch a web browser and type in HTTPS colon slash slash. I'm going to do local host. You can do it from any PC you want on your network. Sorry, it's not 10,000. Just put the IP of the server in there. It's going to be port 7071. This digital certificate is self-signed, so you're going to have to add it. You can always create your own certificate. There's a certificate manager in the administrative council for that. Let's add it. And there it is. Admin. And it's going to be member password. One, two, three. And everything is running great. Uh, here are your domains. If you did not use your host name as your domain name, you can always create your domain name. Just right there and type in your domain name. It's pretty simple, straightforward. Cancel out of that. Let's create an email account and test this out. New account. I'm going to call it Donald. And last name, I'll call it Jonas. And there's just tons of options in here. You know, you can have to go through this when you create accounts. I'm just going to go finished. And set up a quick password. Right click on it. Change the password. I'll call it P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D-1-2-3. P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D-1-2-3. And here's the certificate authority I was talking about. You can go in there and create another digital certificate if you'd like. Or you can um, create a CSR and upload it to like a, you know, a, a certificate authority and have like a, you know, a commercial type uh, certificate created. It's relatively simple. They made it really easy for you. I'm going to log out of here and now I'm going to go to the webmail. HTTPS dot test. I actually created a public name record for this tutorial so it'll, we can test it on the internet. Test.thejonas.net. Once again, add a certificate. This is just a one time deal. You can view it if you'd like. And confirm. And that user was Donald. Now, of course, if you created a domain name in there and didn't use it as your fully qualified, as your host name, as your fully qualified domain name, you would have to type in, like, uh, say, test, blah, 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 at the, you know, whatever your domain name you're using. But since my fully qualified domain name is also my host name, I don't need to do that. So it's just going to be Donald and P-A-S-S-O-R-D, one, two, three. Log in. And as it's coming up, there's the cool instant messaging feature I was telling you about. Uh, under preferences, there's tons of options in here. Um, under email, you can do out of office responses if you'd like. You have uh, calendars, you can share out other users. You have a global address book. There's tons of good stuff in here. I could do another tutorial and just on configuring this. So that pretty much wraps up my tutorial. I'm going to log out of this and um, get out of this. That was a relatively simple uh, exercise in installing this uh, email server. It's very customizable. I've actually come up with a backup solution for this. If you go inside of the webmail, there is an option to where you can actually export, import your configuration settings. You can see it under preferences. Uh, on my next tutorial video, I'm gonna do a, a video on how to back up your entire information store uh, scheduled backup information store and how to restore it that way you have your entire mail server backed up with times and dates so you can restore the entire store how cool is that so once again thank you for visiting the jonas.net i hope this uh, t video was t t uh, tutorial was informative i'm trying to race through this i'm running out of time i only have so much time on youtube video and i hope that you can take something away from this and it helps you i have a great day thank you